Hello, all. It's your girl Tiffany, Madam Luscious Black Beauty, your Poetic Psychic Pisces, High Priestess, um, aka the light that shines like a diamond. I thank each and every one of you for listening and for watching on today. Today is going to be another one of my um, missing mysteries. And this is going to be for a young lady by the name of Alexandria um, Lowitzer. She had an alias um, by um, the name of Allie. So people called her Allie is a nickname. But her name is Alexandria Loritzer. Okay. Um, she's from Spring, Texas. Um, and she was 16 years old at the time of her disappearance in 2010. So today's missing mystery is going to be for her. Okay. So before we get started, I just want to say I hope that you all are doing well and you are feeling well. Um, if you would, um, if you all like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, so I thank you in advance for that, okay? So we're going to cleanse out some of the energy. I also want to say that this, I'm doing this video, this was a request um, from someone that suggested um, I do a missing mystery for this person. So um, I've been researching a lot of things um, for quite a few days. Um, and so I think I have finally pretty much gotten all the information um, I need in order to do, um, this, this, um, reading for you all, okay? So, I'd like to give you all an image of what the person looked like, um, at the time of their disappearance. Um, so if you all would just give me just a second to pull that up for you. And then I did several different things for this reading. I did pull cards. I have several different messages from um, from cards. I also did a spirit reading for her as well. So um, we're going to get into all of that. And we're just going to go over some, um, some overall information pertaining um, to this young lady. Okay. So... This is Allie Lewitzer, okay? Like I said, she was 16 years old when she disappeared from Spring, Texas. Um, she just kind of vanished one day after school. After getting off the school bus um, at home, she disappeared, okay? So we're going to be getting into... Um, these messages for her i want to go over some brief information with you all okay so like i said alexandria ali for short um lewitzer was 16 years old at the time of her disappearance okay her date of birth is february the 3rd 1994 she has blue eyes her hair is naturally brown but it was dyed black at the time um, she kind of has this very kind of dark, gothic, you know, type of look or style to her, uh, which is how she looks in most of the images that I've seen of her, okay? She, her height was about 5'2". She weighed about 145 to 150 pounds at the time of her disappearance. Um, on the day that she went missing, she was last seen wearing dark color pants. A shirt and a hoodie um, type sweatshirt and she had a multicolored backpack um, her sex is said to be female um, we're gonna get more into that in a little bit her race um, is said to be white and the last date that she was seen was April 26 of 2010 like I said she is from Spring Texas okay so the overall details that we have pertaining to the situation, which is all the information that is on the FBI's website, is as follows. Ellie was last seen getting off her school bus at around 2.44 p.m. 
Her bus stop was a her bus stop was approximately 250 feet from her house in Spring, Texas. A witness reported seeing Allie texting on her phone after she got off the bus. She was she has not been seen or heard from since. So that's all the information that was provided on the FBI's website. But I did a lot of digging pertaining to the situation, doing a lot of research on various different um, things, okay? So I did find some other information, and I'm going to go through that with you right now, okay? So before her disappearance, these were the chain of events, okay? On Monday, April 26, 2010, Alexandra Ali Lowitzer was awakened by her mother, Joanne Lowitzer. She proceeded to get ready for school and left home around 7.30 a.m. By 2.30 p.m., Allie was on the bus heading home from school, during which time Allie called her mom to tell her she forgot her house keys. So Joanne, which is Allie's mother, um, is said to have called her son Mason to leave the door unlocked for Allie, okay? Um, Allie also at that time asked her mom if she could walk to her job at the Burger Barn to pick up her paycheck and to see if she could pick up a shift for that evening. Joanne, which is Allie's mother, is said to have reluctantly agreed and told Allie to stay in touch with her if she was going to um, work that evening so she would know to pick her up. At around 5.30 p.m., Joanne... Um, Lewitzer, which is the mother of Alexandria Ali Lewitzer, um, returned home, okay? At this point, Ali is missing, okay? Allegedly, um, Joanne arrived home around 5.30 p.m., and Ali was not um, there, nor had she heard from Alexandria at all, okay? Sources then say concerned Joanne Lewitzer then drove to the Burger Barn only to find the restaurant closed, okay? So I'm going to stop right here for just a minute, okay? There's a few red flags for me, okay? This girl was in high school. Um, I don't know what, first of all, she is said to have been dropped off, okay? By she is said to have been on her bus that evening at two thirty, and she was dropped off at home by two forty four. What high school lets out that early? Okay, number one. So, you know, I don't know if she went to a different school or if she got out early. Like, like what time of school did they have there? Like, high school does not let out that early. So that was kind of weird for me. Okay, also. Like I said, remember when I told you that Joanne, the mother, she got home around 5.30 p.m. and she realized that Allie was not at home, so then she drove to Allie's job, which was only about 10 minutes away from their home, okay? Remind you, she got home at 5.30, so we can estimate and say, mm, maybe by 6 o'clock, she left out um, and headed to Allie's job, okay? Now, Joanne says that when she got to the Burger Barn, the restaurant was closed. What burger restaurant do you know closes that early in the evening? Okay, highly suspicious indeed. Red flag number two for me. Nevertheless, Joanne Lowitzer then called um, Alexandria's dad, John Lowitzer, to alert him of the problem. Apparently, John and Joanne Lowitzer called Allie called Allie's friends, as well as her boyfriend, yet no one um, had seen or heard from Allie. Yet, um, for some reason, at this point, Joanne Lewitzer isn't said to have called the police to report her daughter as missing until around 11 p.m. that night. A officer is said to have come to the Lewitzer's home, looked in Allie's bedroom, and then stated um, to the parents that Ali was probably a runaway for the night. Um, the officer then suggested that the Lowitzers call back the next day um, if Ali hadn't returned home, okay? Um, at this point, the Lowitzers, um, Joanne and John, are said to have conducted their own search in various places. 
places, such as the school, the school bus, the burger barn where Allie worked, the gas station across the street, they checked with neighbors, etc. Okay. Um, they also put out, uh, it's said to have um, raised a $25,000 reward for any information pertaining to Alexandria um, Lowitzer's um, whereabouts um, or for her safe return. Okay, um, which was never claimed, by the way. Okay, they went as far as to hiring private investigators as well as um, hiring um, an agency called Laura Recovery Center, which um, helps find missing people. Okay, um, the mother inter interacted with um, this, this Laura Recovery Center quite a bit. Um, you know, it was sometime later, it was said that um, um, Joanne received some type of phone call or message or something from somebody out of state um, claiming to have seen somebody at a church function that looked like Alexandria Lowitzer. Um, but, it, you know, she was told that the girl looked like, you know, she didn't want to speak or she couldn't speak and she was told to act like that or something. Joanne and the people from the recovery center that she was working with ended up traveling to this other state um, to find this girl. They ended up running into a prostitute um, that was said to have told them that the person that they was looking for looked like a prostitute that had been on the street that went by the name of Alley Cat. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say, I believe all of that was a decoy, okay? As a matter of fact, I have information pertaining to all of that that clearly suggests that all of that was just, you know, some type of decoy attempt to um, throw off the investigation, okay? Because while they were in the state, they were said to talk to prostitutes. They were said to go to drug houses. They were said to um, meet with undercover uh undercover cops who were posing as um, prostitutes or pedophiles or drug dealers and that was undercover um, in the neighborhood and different things like that or whatever. They never did find Alexandria and I just really think that it was just like this witch hunt attempt um, that, you know, just put them on this wild goose chase or whatever because several other individuals knew exactly what was going on on and happening with the situation guys okay so um i'm gonna go ahead into the rest of the information that i have and then i'm going to give you some more details from um like i said there's several different articles um this th there this story appeared on an episode of disappeared um ironically season nine episode nine or something like that um you know which is it's, it's quite it, there, there's a lot of fishy stuff around this okay i know that you know there are higher individuals involved in this situation it's just like way too fishy okay but we're gonna get into all of that information um yeah, it was just, it, it, it's a lot, okay? But uh, a lot of people have talked about this case. So there are like bloggers and different things. It's got, you know, several different articles of things that they've researched and this, that, and the other or whatever. Um, so however, however, you know, with me being this intuitive psychic investigator right now, I have found information that, you know, nobody else is going to come across because, to be quite frank, most people are sellouts and they're ops. And the information I have, they aren't, they wouldn't say, they wouldn't put out, okay? So we're going to get into it and I'm just going to let y'all know the information that I have. Um, it, it's a whole lot and I feel like there's even more which I'm going to continue to work on because, you know, usually when I get quite a bit of information periodically, I'll ask my spirit guides, you know, is there anything else I need to know pertaining to this case? And, you know, my spirit guides may say no, they'll say yes. If there's yes, then I'll go back and say, what am I missing? What else do I need to know? This, that, and the other. My spirit guides keep telling me that there's more, there's more, there's more. Or whatever but I have quite a bit of information like already so I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you all 
If anything else comes up along the way, then of course I'm going to relay that to you all. Um, for the individuals who actually did care about this person, um, you know, I send my condolences to you all pertaining to this situation. Um, however, um, I will say that there's a lot of shady and grimy type of people that is linked to this situation as well, okay? Um, it's a lot of people um, just playing their roles, okay? Um, and more often than not, um, whether you have interviewers or other researchers, bloggers, this, that, and the other, they just take, you know, everybody else's word for it. Oh, they said this, they said that, and you just, you know, the police said this, the parents said that, the neighbor said this, the, the friend said that, and, and that's what you go off of. And that's what you automatically think is the truth, and that's what you report. But more often than not, that's not that's that's not the case at all okay and people are lying um so i guess that's what sets me apart and makes me different so we're going to get into these messages okay guys um there's a lot here i'm trying to see where i want to start okay guys well Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I will tell you this off top before I get into anything else. I pulled um, a message dice on this. I pulled cards. I did a spirit reading, everything. Usually, I start off with a spirit reading after I give you all the backstory information of everything. And then I go into the cards. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to really see where I want to start, okay? Um... First of all, let me just tell you all that Ali, which is Alexandria um, Lowitzer, is no longer with us, okay? Um, she has crossed over. Um, I will clarify um, by the end of this reading if she has made it to the light already, but she is deceased and she has crossed over, okay? Um, so I'm just going to start here with these messages and then I'm going to go and to some other messages, okay? Um, the first message we have here is victim um, was stalked by the killer, okay? So Alexandria had been watched. She had been being followed. She had been being stalked and harassed um, for quite some time, okay? She was being watched um, by one or more persons, okay? But people were very familiar with Alexandria, okay? nicknamed Allie, okay? So if you hear me say Allie or Alexandria, I'm talking about the same person, okay? Um, she had been watched, okay? She had been getting followed and stalked and harassed and everything else. She, she was a target, okay? So one of the main individuals um, uh, involved in this situation had been stalking and watching Alexandria, okay? Um, spirit then comes through and say, take a closer look at, um, the suspects, okay? Do you see these people here? How many people there's here? This lets you know that there are several different individuals involved in the situation as to what happened to Allie, okay? So, um, you know, we're not talking about just one person who, you know, horrifically did something to, um, this young lady okay um spirit is coming through and saying surveillance cameras may provide important clues okay what i'm going to say about this briefly is um this came out there could be some other surveillance cameras but i do know for a fact at this point which i'm going to get into in my spirit reading but the surveillance cameras from the burger barn which is where ali worked as well as the gas station across the street Individuals involved in this case um, told those individuals, prompted those individuals to erase the footage with Allie on it, okay? Because it is said that, um, uh, I believe the father uh, went, when they were doing their own investigations around places, checking surveillance and things, they were able to pull the surveillance from the school to know when she left the school. Um, to even see her on the bus because there was a camera on the bus to notice she got on the bus and that's how they knew exactly what time she got off the bus and everything or whatever. 
yet somehow, um, you know, people lied and said that she didn't show up where she had told her mom she was going when in fact she did but the surveillance cameras was erased okay and people were told to lie and that was covered up okay so there could be other surveillance cameras um but i do know for a fact that the surveillance cameras at the burger barn as well as the gas station that's across the street from it the surveillance cameras were erased showing ali on them okay once again, like I told you, there are multiple people involved in this crime, okay? This was a collective effort. This was like, you know, this was like set up, okay, by multiple different individuals, okay? Money is involved, okay? So individuals were paid to go along with this setup um, to sacrifice Allie. Um there's other money matters as well that's going to come up that I'm going to get into <clears throat> when I get to the spirit reading to let you all know what exactly went down that day, okay? But um, money does play a, uh, has a big part in this because individuals involved were paid to set up Alexandria, okay? There's a witness um, who is afraid to come forward, okay? Um, their spirit is saying they're afraid to come forward <clears throat> with valuable information. They've seen something. They know something. They were possibly told to shut up, not speak about it or something. You see this person here, how they look shook, how they look scared with, you know, like something over their mouth saying help. They want to speak, but they can't. There's people um, who seen, um, you know, either when she was abducted, seeing her know that she came to the job that day, you know, and different things, but they, they're afraid to come forward. They were told not to speak, okay? The next message we have here is premeditated murder. Killer planned out the details in advance. I told you, there are several people involved. This was a setup. This was a sacrifice of Alexandria, okay? And it was premeditated murder. It was already set up, arranged, plotted, planned, schemed well before it happened, okay? It was just a matter of when, where, and how it was going to take place, but it was already planned, okay? Once again, we have money that come up. There was a motive for committing the crime, okay? Which I'm going to tell you more about this in a minute, okay? Because, look, this one that talks about their money was a motive, uh, money may be involved, okay? People were paid. This is saying people were paid to commit this crime, okay? This card here, you see those money bags on, like, in a safe on that shelf or something like that or whatever. It says there was a motive for committing the crime. This, and you see this person uh, stealing, okay? Yeah, we're going to get into that in a minute, okay? Because it, uh, there was stealing of money that was going on as well, which also... Is the reason why one of the reasons why um, Ali was attacked um, one of the main suspects well like I said there's multiple people involved but the abductor of Alexandria okay he lives um, near the scene of the crime okay so we're between where Ali was abducted at and and where she was assaulted and murdered this um, the, the doctor lives near the scene of the crime, okay? I mean, like I said, there were multiple people involved, but somebody sustained some type of wound while attacking Alexander, okay? Also, um, Spirit is coming through and saying that the killer had an argument with the victim here, okay? I'm just going to I'm gonna get into it more in my reading. I'm going to just tell you off top that Alexandria had an argument with her manager at the Burger Born on the day that she disappeared. That's what this is about, okay? I told you there's a lot of people that is involved, okay? So let me just break this down to you, okay? Now I'm going to go to the tarot, okay, on this. Then we're going to get into the spirit reading, and then I have some more messages for you, okay? Okay, so the first card we have here is judgment, okay? There was some type of decision that was made. There was some judgment or ruling or order or decision that was made pertaining to this situation, okay? 
Next, we have the Five of Cups. This decision that was made, it brought about sadness, loss, um, um, basically sadness and loss for Allie, okay? There was this decision that was made, okay? And I'm just going to tell you off top, there was a decision that was made on her job, okay? That was going to, that caught, that, that she was upset about, that she was saddened about, okay? Um, eventually, like I said, got upset about, okay, that, that caused her some kind of loss, okay? With the Two of Cups, this talks about a partnership, okay? So this is speaking in, in, in terms of her job here, okay? With the Wheel of Fortune that is turning here, okay? Which speaks to, um, you know, the Wheels of Fortune turning. It can speak to um, materialism as far as finances, money, resources, and things like that or whatever. Um, with this being here, this, this let us know... With the judgment, a decision being made that brought about some type of sadness, loss, or pain uh, for Allie um, pertaining to a partnership, a relationship that she had. This would have been her employment at this job. She was losing her job. She got fired on the day that she went to her job. Okay. We have the queen of coins here. Okay. So this person could have had her fired, okay? Or the, the 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 reason that this took place was because of this individual or we're speaking of a lot of money here, okay? So um, Alexandria, there, this decision that was made, okay? This brought her sadness. Alexandria, like I told you all, she had talked to her mom. She had asked her mom, could she walk to her job to pick up her paycheck and to try to pick up another shift at the job, Okay. Alexandra did indeed walk to her job, okay? There was an altercation that happened with her manager. She had an argument with her manager, okay? Alexandria um, was accused of... Um, this is what the argument was about. Alexandria was accused of stealing from her job, okay? And Alexandria was fired, okay? Okay? So that's what happened on the day that she went to her job. This pissed Alexandria off. Um, I am going to say allegedly. I'm just telling you what happened on that day because I feel like that this whole thing was set up. I, I mean, she, she could have been stealing from the job. Um, I'm just telling you what the cards say, okay? But this is the reason why she lost her job. When she went to the job that day to try to pick up another shift to get her check, she had an altercation with the manager there, okay? This altercation was pertaining to, to her. Let, let me just go to the rest of the cards, okay? So then we have the moon here that sits right up under the judgment cards. The moon talks about, the, you know, there being some type of... Um, illusions or secrets or things that was hidden pertaining to this judgment or decision that was being made that's why i feel like that this decision was like a setup you know what i'm saying like this was done on purpose to her okay okay to to clarify the 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 five of cups here we have the two of swords so you see the reason why that there was sadness and loss um, because of the decision that was made. I told you with the judgment cards, this talks about some type of order or judgment or ruling being made, okay? With the five of cups being there, this feeling of, of, of sadness and loss was because of this decision that was made, okay? But there's a lot of hidden agendas and secrets pertaining to the decision that was made, okay? Why? Because it's a, it was a setup, okay? So to clarify the two of cups, which talks about this partnership with her job, okay? She had extreme feelings, overwhelming emotions. Um, she was very upset about losing her job, okay? With the ace of cups here. The ace of cups is sitting right up under the two of cups here, okay? To clarify the will of fortune here, we have the seven of wands okay so she was feeling defensive she uh you know towards losing you know not having a job losing her money um her you know this endurance um you know like what is she going to do how is she going to make it what is she how is she going to tell her parent you know or whatever 
because of this, you know, this wheel is turning. And it, but it wasn't turning in her favor. You understand? Because she had lost her job. She had just been fired. To clarify this queen of coins here, we have the ten of sorts. So I believe that Allie is coming through as this, this, this queen of sorts. She had been stealing money. Okay, that's why she's coming through as the queen of coins. Excuse me if I said that wrong. That's the reason why Allie came through um, as the queen of coins. She had been stealing money. This is the reason why she had so much money. She had been stealing money from the job. And with this ten of swords here, this this it was decided she it was decided that she was going to be taken out. This is where the betrayal came from. This is where the setup came from. This is the reason why she was set up and she was attacked the way she was. Okay? With the Ten of Swords, this talks about backstab, stabbing, betrayal, um, you know, uh, people working against you, trying to harm you, trying to kill you even. The Ten of Swords in the traditional tarot deck, you see this guy that's laid out on the ground. He looks like he's dead and he's got ten swords in his back from people who have attacked him, okay? But they decided to set her up like this for various different reasons, one of which being the fact that she was stealing from the job. Okay? So then we have here, okay, this is what happened that day on her job, okay? I'm going to get into more of what happened after that. That's what happened when she went to her job. The manager lied to police to the parents and said that Allie never came to the job that day when she actually did and this whole altercation went down, okay? After Allie left there upset, okay, after the big blow up and argument with her manager about this and losing her job, she left there heading back home to walk home, okay? This manager made a call to someone, okay? And Alexandria was approached a short time later while walking, okay? Here we have the chariot that sits right up under the judgment, that sits right up under the moon. Now you can see the setup taking place, okay? From the moment that she left that job, the setup was on, okay? Now the chariot talks about moving, leaving, traveling, transportation. But a lot of times when you see the chariot, this also speaks of police. You understand me? Alexandria was approached, was stopped by a police officer that offered her a ride. Okay? Next, we have the Eight of Swords here. Do you see this lady where her hands are tied? Her, she's got a blindfold around her eyes. She was bound. She was gagged. She was... Uh, uh, she the handcuffs was put on her blindfolds were put over her eyes her mouth could have been gagged okay she was detained by this officer that abducted her okay okay next we have here the four of swords okay now you see this person laid out here he also looks like he's dead in a casket you see this another four swords stabbing into him okay there were things that was done to this young lady where she ultimately lost her life the four of swords talks about recovery uh you know either somebody physically being in recovery or somebody recovering from injuries that they sustained and different things but it can it can be spoken upon in various different ways but this girl was harmed the injuries that she sustained it wasn't a recovering from it. It killed her. Okay. Why? Why was this done? Five of Wands. Competition. Conflicts. You see all these people working against her? It was a setup, guys. Okay. So, the chariot sits right up under judgment in the moon. The Eight of Swords sits right up under the uh the the five of cups and the two of swords okay the uh the the four of swords sits right up under the two of cups 
and the Ace of Cups, okay? Now we have the Five of Wands, which talks about competitions, conflict, disagreements, okay? People working against you, sitting up right up under the Wheel of Fortune and the Seven of Wands, okay? You, you, you see the pattern, the chain of events, you see what happened, okay? Now, sitting up under the, the, the like I said, Ali came through as the queen of coins, okay, because she had been getting all this money from the job. This is the reason why the ten of swords happened. This is the reason why she was betrayed. Um, she was backstabbed. She, she, this was, she was assaulted in this way. This was done to her. Next, we have the seven of swords. Didn't I tell you she had stolen money from the job? The seven of swords talks about lying, cheating, stealing, being manipulative, being sneaky, Okay, look at the chain of events, people. I can't make it up. Alexandria came through as the queen of coins because, not because she's an earth sign, because she had been stolen so much money from this job, okay? With the, uh, with the uh, ten of swords here, this is the reason why she was betrayed. This is the reason why that she was fired. Now, they could have easily just fired her. And says your services are no longer welcome here. You understand what I'm saying? But no. But but see, all this betrayal happened because of lying, cheating, stealing, deceiving, manipulative behavior that was going on. This is what she got into it with her manager about. But she had other people that was in competition with her. Like this was set up from the jump. You know what I'm saying? Um by multiple people that was working against her, envious of her. The individual, okay, the individual that the that the the, the individual that um, abducted, okay, because there's several individuals involved, which I'm going to tell you about that when I get to the spirit reading. The officer that pulled over, offered Ali a ride, then proceeded to abduct her and later restrained her is a um, fire sign Sagittarius Aries or Leo individual we have the king of wands here he is a fire sign okay the reason why he did this was for money also the the with the this this is the eight of coins okay so this talks about his job this was his job he was told to do this we have the ace of swords here it's the truth, baby. It ain't nothing but the truth. Okay. Okay, so let me get into the spirit reading for you all. And then I got some other messages, okay, to share with you all. Okay, number one, I asked my spirit guides, did Allie make it to her job after getting off the bus? My spirit guides tell me yes. I asked my spirit guides, did the manager, did the manager lie and said that Ali didn't come to the job that day or, or pick up her or, or check? My, the spirit, my spirit guides tell me, yes, the manager did indeed lie and say, lie to the police, lie to the parents, predominantly the parents, okay? Predominantly the parents, and you're going to know why I say predominantly the parents, okay? Because there was definitely a cover up that went on here, okay? Um, uh, the, the manager told them that Allie did not come to the job that day when in fact she did. The surveillance cameras were erased, guys, okay? Um, okay, so I asked my spirit guides, um, did Allie pick up her check from her job on the day of her disappearance? My spirit guides tell me yes. Okay, so we know she went to her job. She told her mom she was going to her job to pick up her check to see if she could work that evening to pick up some extra hours. Okay, um, but my spirit guides say she indeed went to that job. She indeed picked up her check. Okay. Next, I asked my spirit guides, um, the gas station attended across the street from the Burger Barn, were they told to erase the video footage showing Allie on it? My spirit guides tell me yes. I asked my spirit guides, 
was Allie, uh, if Allie was fired on the day that she went to pick up her check from work? My spirit guides tell me yes. I asked my spirit guides, was Allie supposedly um, fired for stealing? My spirit guides tell me yes. I asked my spirit guides, the surveillance footage, was the surveillance footage erased at the burger barn? My spirit guides tell me yes. I asked my spirit guides, um, if Allie was abducted while walking back home from her job, my spirit guides tell me yes. I asked my spirit guides, did a person stop and offer Allie a ride? My spirit guides tell me yes. My spirit guides also tell me that Allie willingly got in the vehicle with the person that offered her the ride. Okay. My spirit guides tell me that Allie did not um, know the person specifically that offered her the ride. Okay. This was indeed a stranger to her. However, my spirit guides tell me that Allie felt comfortable with accepting the ride from this individual because it was a police officer that offered her the ride. Okay, guys. Not only was this a police officer, but this police officer was in uniform and in his marked police car on the day that this happened, okay? So he wasn't in plain civilian clothing, okay? He wasn't in his regular vehicle. He was in uniform, and he was driving his, his issued police vehicle, okay? My spirit guides tell me that the officer... That abducted Ali, like I said, is a fire sign. He is either Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo individual. My spirit guides tell me that the officer is a white and or Caucasian man between the age of 40 and 50 years old, okay? My, my spirit guides tell me that this officer was fairly new to the police force at the time of Ali's disappearance. He had only been on the job for six months to one year of duty, okay? My spirit guides tell me that the officer was triggered or set up, to, which would means he was told to abduct Ali, okay? Which he did so. And that's the reason why you see the card when it showed him and you see the eight of coins, okay? And the eight of coins talks about your job, okay? The money that you get from your job, okay? So he was ordered to do something on the job while on the job, which he did. Okay. And that's the reason why you had the ace of swords come behind it to the spirit coming through saying that's the truth. Okay. Um, so my spirit guys tell me that the officer is a Freemason at the time of Allie's disappearance. This officer that abducted um, Allie was only a third degree Freemason at the time of of Ali's disappearance. My spirit guides tell me that Ali's parents were paid for the sacrifice of their daughter. Um, I, I, I feel so. My spirit guides, I, it came through as parents. Um, it could be both. I, I strongly feel the father though. Okay, because I know that he is a Freemason as well. Okay, my spirit guides tell me that Ali's abduction, rape, and murder was a part of a satanic sacrifice ritual. Okay, um, my spirit guides tell me that Alexandria Lowitzer's body is still in Spring, Texas. Okay, um, Ali was, uh, my spirit guides tell me that Ali was buried in the woods. Okay, somewhere in the woods. I mean, Texas is huge. Okay, this could be the woods anywhere okay guys i would have to know certain areas around spring um taxes to be able to narrow it down and directly ask my spirit guys is it this area for me to get a direct answer and i just uh, i know certain parts of texas but i've never heard of spring texas um to really do that i would have to get into that later which would take a lot more time okay um my spirit guys tell me that there were a total of eight persons who were involved in the assault on Ali, okay? Um, these were officers, uh, government officials, people in power, okay? Um, I believe them all to be officers, though, okay? But these were authority figures, is the bottom line. There was a total of eight persons. There was only one 
that initially abducted Ali, okay, once he was able to get her secluded um, in the area that, 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 that he took her, there were seven other persons that, um, that engaged, that, that came there and engaged in uh, assaulting Ali, okay? My spirit guides tell me that Ali's father is a Freemason, like I just told you. Not to mention, okay, this is how I, I told you these satanic powers that be, they signs and they symbolisms is going to be their downfall. They throw these signs and symbolisms so cocky around, like all the time, y'all, okay? Now, you've heard me say, mention several names to Freemasonry, okay? The, the, the um, manager at the Burger Barn is a Freemason. Ali's father is a Freemason. Okay, the cop that abducted Ali is a Freemason. Tell me why Alexandra's brother is named Mason. Okay, guys, you can't make it up. Okay, don't believe me? Look it up. Like, seriously. Like, so, like, if the red flags wasn't any more clear in this situation, okay? But she has a brother named Mason. Okay, like, they really into masonry over there, okay? Um... So, you know, if the red flags was all over the place for me um, on this situation. Um, there was a lot of obvious signs um, that directed, you know, directly to Freemason involvement. Um, however, Alexandria Ali Lowitzer is a, and I'm not saying this to be disrespectful, guys, okay? My spirit guides tell me that Alexandria... Allie Lowitzer is naturally born a boy, okay? Allie was transgender, okay? Um, Allie did have a boyfriend at the time, and my spirit guides, I kind of got some conflicting information. My spirit guides told me that, yes, the boyfriend knew that she was naturally born a boy, and then I got a no. So maybe he did know, maybe he did know, but I did directly ask did the boyfriend get upset with Alexandria? Did the boyfriend do anything or partake in anything that happened to Alexandria? And I was told no, okay? So whether he knew that she was transgender or not, okay, that I I, I got mixed symbols on that, okay? My spirit guides tell me that Ali was sacrificed because she was... She was sacrificed for multiple different reasons, okay? She was set up by her job for stealing money, okay? But she also was a target because of the fact that she was transgender. Remember when I told you that she was already being watched and followed and stalked? She was a target, okay? So she was already being harassed because of the fact that she was transgendered, okay? She was transgendering from boy to girl. She lived her life as a girl, um, yet, of course, you know, did not have the full surgery, so technically was still a boy and gay because she did like boys, okay? Nevertheless, um, my spirit guides tell me that Allie was beaten, strangled, and raped, okay? Um, the cause of death was due to strangulation by a rope, um, and I believe that Allie also sustained a gunshot wound, Okay? My spirit guides tell me that weapons were used on Ali, such as a police bouton, a gun, handcuffs, etc. Blindfolds, you know, it, it, they tortured this person. Okay. My spirit guides tell me that Alexandria was being targeted, harassed because she was transgender, like I just told you, all from um, boy to girl. Okay. Alexandria was into dark magic. And or a, a satanic cult as well, okay? Like I told you all in the beginning, Alexandria, all of her pictures does have like this, you know, the dark gothic type of look, you know? And I mean, it's nothing to put nobody down about. Everybody has different type of styles and looks or whatever. That just particularly happened to be Alexandria's style, what she was into. You know, some people just like that look. And then you have people that, that take on that look because they're gothic or because they are Satanists or whatever. Um, 
I don't really know of Alexandria beliefs like that, but I do know the fact that, that she had this gothic look and was transgender. She was already a target. And, you know, all the pictures that you see, especially the ones with, with her parents, I'm going to see if I can show you all that. She just looks so disgusted to be next to her mother at the time. Um, the parents were going through, you know, had went through a separation. They were no longer together. And Alexandria, you know, I believe started acting out or felt some type of way um, about this or whatever. But, you know, Alexandria was 16. So, she, you know, this... Your hormones are flowing. That's at the age where, you know, teens start kind of rebellion or, you know, rebelling and doing different things or whatever. So I kind of feel like that that was going, what was going on with Alexandria. Okay. So that's that. Okay. Um, so Alexandria was into dark magic or a satanic cult, though, okay? So my spirit guides did clearly say that, okay? She was into that type of stuff. Um, I asked my spirit guides, was Joanne Lewitzer aware her daughter would be sacrificed and killed? I got a no. I don't, I, I don't think initially... Um, I don't think initially... She, uh, the mother Joanne knew that 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 she was going to be her daughter was going to be sacrificed and killed. I believe that she was told thereafter these chain of events went on. OK, however, my spirit guides tell me that John Lowitzer, which is the father, knew about the setup that um, his um, daughter would be sacrificed and killed. OK, he was a part of the setup. He's the Freemason. So he was linked with other individuals that was a part of the setup. Um, and my spirit guides also tell me that John Lowitzer, he hid um, a lot of information about the setup from Joanne, okay? John was also very bitter and angry about the separation or divorce or breakup or whatever from Joanne. Um, my spirit guides also tell me that, um, my spirit guides also tell me that, um, he, he kind of felt some type of way about, um, ab about, um, Ali being transgender as well, okay? So, you know, a lot of that played a part. He didn't really like the fact that Ali was transgender. Um, he was bitter and angry about the divorce or the separation with Joanne, um, you know, having to move out the home and different things like that or whatever. So it was a lot of strenuous, strenuous, strenuous things, excuse me, going on, okay? Um... My spirit guides tell me that the officer involved in the disappearance of Ali was a, a part of an initiation ritual slash sacrifice, okay? My spirit guides tell me that the Burger Barn manager was in on the setup as well as the cover up of the abduction of Ali, okay? My spirit guides tell me that the manager slash clerk at the gas station that's across the street from the Burger Barn, um... This camera's footage of, or this person was told to erase the camera footage of that day that had Ali on it. Okay, so this is the reason why there was no camera footage that was recovered. Well, the camera footage that was recovered from the burger barn as well as the gas station did not show Ali on it because it had been edited, it had been doctored, it had, certain clips had been erased from it. Okay, my spirit guides tell me that there is indeed a cover up within the police department concerning Ali's abduction. Okay, my spirit guides tell me that the Texas mayor told the FBI to take over the case and for the local police department in, in Texas, in Spring, Texas, to stand down. Okay, so let me say that again. The Texas mayor told the FBI to take over the um, Alexandria Lowitzer's case, okay? And he also told the local Spring Police Department to stand down and allow the FBI to take over, okay? Which basically meant that the FBI would come in and pretty much, you know, overrule the entire case, the entire investigation, okay? Which eventually, you know, they purposely made go cold, okay? Because... There was internally, there was 
things that was going on. There was a cover up that was happening. Okay. Um, my spirit guys tell me that the officer that offered Allie the ride, he raped her, okay? But he was not the only person who assaulted her. There was other officers that were involved that also assaulted, um, beat, raped, and tortured Allie in different ways, okay? Um, my spirit guys do tell me that the officer that offered Allie the ride as well, he participated in killing her, okay? He solely did not rape and kill her alone, okay? My spirit guys tell me that Allie was taken to a uh, secluded area in the woods somewhere in Spring, Texas, okay? Um, and like I said, like I told you all, there were other officers, authority figures involved in the assault on Allie as well. My spirit guys tell me that the officer that abducted Allie handcuffed her. He blindfolded her, okay, and um, he took her to this 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 secluded area, okay. Um, my spirit guys tell me that the manager at the Burger Barn he called um, he either called the officer directly he called he called someone, okay. The person that he called, my spirit guys is telling me, is a fellow Mason, okay? So whoever he, he either called the officer directly after Allie left the restaurant or he called a fellow Mason of his who then knew the officer and called the officer and told them that the setup was on and to go, you know, what to do next or whatever, okay? But the manager made a call to someone after Allie left the restaurant, okay? Um... And so Allie was picked up after, uh, you know, she was fired um, for allegedly stealing from the job and things like that. She left the job. She got in an argument with the manager. She left the job upset. Um, and I just really feel like that that whole thing was a setup. And that's the reason why, you know, I told you with this, this judgment, this decision to fire her, there was some type of hidden secrets and illusions pertaining to that situation with the moon card here. Okay, and then you have the chariot here. So it was all set up. Okay, this is like everything was set up. It was put in, in motion to happen like that. Okay, that's the reason why I told y'all that like that. Okay, but I really feel like the whole thing was a setup. It was made to seem like, uh, you know, like, um, you know, either he approached her because she willingly got in the car. So there's a part of me that feels in spirit came through and said that, you know, she willingly got it. He offered her a ride. She willingly got in the vehicle. So, you know, he could have approached her like, you know, at first, like, you know, hey, you don't want to see a young girl walking. You need a ride. You know, you don't live far away. Let me give you a ride real quick so you don't have to be walking on this road or whatever. She got in the car and then I believe he, he, um, he he detained her. That's when he like did this, you know, put her in handcuffs, blind all this other kind of stuff and made it seem like she was going to be arrested or something because of what happened at the job. But it was an attempt to abduct her. Okay. That's what went on, y'all. My spirit guys also tell me that Allie's parents, Joanne and John, were aware of the setup and the sacrifice of their daughter. Like I told you all, I feel more so the father than um the mother i i do feel at this point she knows okay um it's been a long time this happened in 2010 you know there's a lot of information you know that she's for privy to now that she may not have had right away because like i said john lewis or hid a lot of information pertaining to the setup the sacrifice um from her you know I, this sacrifice i feel like was predominantly done for him I'm not sure what type of work he does, but he definitely was a mason. You know, these people that's in these secret societies, you know, it comes a time when they have to make these sacrifices and different things like that. And, you know, it didn't it didn't help the situation that, you know, he had to, he didn't like the fact that Ali was transgender. He didn't like the fact of the divorce, the separation, having to leave his home and all of this, you know, other stuff. And then on top of the fact of Ali, you know, becoming rebellious, acting out in a ways and, you know, stealing allegedly and, and, and whatever else on the job, guys. Okay. 
So my spirit guys tell me that Allie had an argument with the manager on the day that she disappeared. Like I told you all, this was pertaining to the situation that happened at the job, which led to her being fired. Um, my spirit guys tell me that there were other employees seen that seen Allie come to the job that day on the day that she disappeared. These individuals were either told, they obviously were told to shut up about it, not speak about it, say that they did not see her that day when in fact they did, okay? This was a major cover up, okay? Um, my spirit guys told me that Allie was a part um, um. Allie was upset, excuse me. My spirit guys tell me that Allie was saddened, she was upset, she was angry when she left her job um, at the Burger Barn on in, on the day that she went missing. Um, she began, she proceeded to start walking um, towards home, which is said to only be about maybe 10 minutes away um, or whatever, and that's when she was approached, okay, um, by the officer. My spirit guys tell me that the manager at Burger Barn, he called a fellow Mason about what happened with Allie after she left the job, okay? Um, and, and, and I believe that person is the person who contacted this officer who, and told them, you know, what to do, okay? Um, my spirit guys tell me that a satanic cult did a um, some type of a, a ritual with Allie's body. Uh, you know, out in the woods, you know, when they attacked her and tortured, did all these other things to her, okay? There was some type of satanic, um, there was a satanic cult or group or those of them that was out there, they was a part of, you know, the secret society or satanic cult or group or whatever, but they did some type of ritual with Ali's body, okay? Um, my spirit guides do tell me that Ali was abducted, she was tortured, she was raped, she was murdered, and all of this did occur in Spring, Texas. Also, my spirit guides tell me that Allie was never taken out of the state of Texas. There's a lot of accounts of guesstimations that she could have been, you know, human sex traffic because there's a lot of human trafficking that goes on in Texas. But pertaining to this case, Allie was not taken out of the state of Texas, okay? Um, she was taken to a secluded area in the woods somewhere in Spring, Texas, which is where she was attacked, assaulted, tortured, and murdered, okay? Um, and my spirit guides did tell me that these officers did bury her body, okay? Her body has been buried out in those woods, okay? Um. Okay, also, um, my spirit guides tell me that that there was some type of, um, there was a, there's a, a, a doppelganger that was created um, to look like Ali, okay? Remember when I told you that sometime later that Joanne ended up getting some type of call or message or something from someone saying that they thought that they had spotted Ali somewhere um, and this person looked like they was in distress and being made, you know, to do this, that, and the other, and that she ended up going down there with this Laura Recovery Group or whatever to try to find um, Alexandria. Well, it ended up being, you know, a dead end. It was like literally a decoy. My spirit guys is telling me that it was a setup to throw off the investigation, okay? There was a doppelganger created to look like Alexandria, um... Like I said, to throw off the investigation to make it appear that she was a runaway or, uh, uh, you know, that she maybe was sex trafficked or something at some point. Or, or, but they really try to make it seem like that she was a runaway and, you know, I guess living a sketchy lifestyle and had started prostituting and was out on the streets or something like that or whatever. But they never found anything. They, you know, and they assumed that, you know, they got too close and, and you know her abductors had you know taken her hit her out somewhere else or something like that or whatever but my spirit guys are telling me that there was a doppelganger that was created like all of that was a setup from that individuals that called to the prostitute that they spoke to to the other individuals that they spoke to in the other state um i i, I believe that they were paid to say what they were they were saying because there was like this massive effort to cover this situation up okay guys like i said 
Um, Alexandria's body um, is still in Spring, Texas, as Spirit says. Okay, um, my, my spirit guides tell me that Alexandria was um, buried in the woods, okay? So, um, I mean, she, she would obviously be skeletal remains by now, but um, her body was um, buried, okay? And let me just go back over this, guys, because I think I kind of skipped around over something. I just want to make sure I told you all everything that I have in the spirit reading. And then we're going to get into the extra messages here. Okay. Okay, guys. I think that was everything pertaining to the spirit reading that I needed to tell you all okay so i have some extra messages here from my deck that um i pulled as well okay so these messages are as follows we have satanic cult here okay so i clearly told you that there there is some aspect of satanic cults involved either ali was into satanic cults herself with the you know the whole gothic thing or whatever that did come out in the spirit reading but there was definitely a satanic cult um of people that's in secret societies that partook in doing what they did to ali okay we have set up gone wrong here okay so this definitely you know it's clear indication that this was a setup um you know I, I, Maybe they had other plans as far as the set up goals to do something else with her. Um, perhaps it was going to be an attempt to uh, human sex traffic her or whatever. But, you know, um, you know, things got out of hand and they ended up killing her. OK, um, we have rest in peace here which is spirit coming through clearly letting us know that Ali is no longer with us. She has crossed over at this time. The next message we have is cover up. There was definitely a cover up um, of several in individuals involved, okay? Um, from the people at her job to family to the police department to um, other witnesses and everything. There was a major cover up in this situation we have conflicts and battles okay so these conflicts and battles um you know came from many different avenues okay um it was said that she was having a hard time coping with the fact that her parents had divorced or was separated and things or whatever so there was conflicts with that there was battles on the job with you know the, the manager and different things like that that was going on okay but ultimately she was a alexandria was a blood sacrifice okay this was premeditated this was set up um and it was premeditated betrayal for the love of money i told you there was money that played a part in various different ways in this people were paid to go along with the setup and the sacrifice of Alexandria, okay? We have karmic mother, karmic father here, okay? So spirit is coming through and saying that uh, Alexandria had some very karmic, uh, a very karmic mother as well as father, which is probably the reason why she may have clashed with them at times. And there was this difference, this standoffish type of approach to their relationship, okay? Um, the next message we have here is there is something bidden, being hidden, okay? So, of course, because of a cover-up, the, the authorities are hiding a lot of information pertaining to this case. Of course, her body is being hidden because it has been buried. It is out in the woods. But there's a lot of other things. I mean, they've done, they did a lot of things to try to cover their tracks, okay? The whole family is in on it, okay? So, Spirit is coming through saying that a lot of individuals... Um, within Alexandria's family is in on the setup, you know, of what happened, okay? Burdens caused by others. So these burdens in Alexandria's life was caused by others, which kind of made her feel kind of darkish, like, you know, which is probably why she had the gothic appearance, a way of escaping, you know? Um, 
these burdens caused by others, you know, just trying to cope with your parents being divorced or separated and, you know, the things that the feelings and the emotions that go along with that. OK, but she had a lot of burdens. All the burdens on Alexandria was caused by other people, her being targeted, her being harassed, you know, whether it be because she, she was transgender or for various different reasons. There was a lot of burdens put on her by other people. She felt like she was an orphan. She felt like she was being treated like an orphan, okay? So maybe she felt like an orphan because of the, the separation between her parents, you know, the disconnect between them and everything, but she literally felt like she was being treated like an orphan, okay? The satanic powers that be is all over the situation. They definitely played a big, um, a major part in what happened to her. There is family secrets. It says family secrets. Shh. Okay, so there's definitely hidden things and family secrets within their family dynamic. Okay, that plays a part in um, this situation. These family secrets could be, um, you know, um, Ali's wrote, you know, her sexual, the sexuality and, and, and many other different things. Okay. But Spirit is coming through and saying that the higher ups are pulling the strings of all these puppets, okay? They're all crisis actors. They're all puppets. And the powers that be is controlling them all. Ali sustained an injury on the day that she was abducted, okay? Um, possibly while being raped or beaten or, you know, tortured in a way and things like that. She sustained an injury that was bad enough to kill her, okay? The next message we have here is transformation. Well, we clearly know that that um, Alexandria Ali Loritzer was transgender. Okay, so um, this this girl was transgendering. Okay, um, that's that's who Alexandria felt like she wanted to be. So therefore, you know, she was transforming. Spirit is saying evil is as evil does, okay? So evil definitely was in this situation. Evil was all around Alexandria, okay? Murder was the case, yeah, because they murdered her in cold blood. Murdered her in cold blood. Alexandria was being gang-stalked, harassed, targeted by none other than who? Devil worshippers, okay? People in the satanic powers that be. These devil worshippers caused her death, okay? There was a lot of dark energy, manipulation, um, you know, con artists, very sneaky. Um, this could be coming through as Alexandria's energy, okay? She is said to have been stealing from the job, was very manipulative, sneaky, you know, with that seven of swords coming out or whatever. But, you know, there was a lot of manipulation and other things going on too, dark energy pertaining to the higher powers. Okay, that is clearly all over this situation. Um, there was a lot of trauma that was forced upon Alexandria for various different reasons. Okay, unnecessary trauma that was caused to her. Yep, childhood trauma and drama. Okay. There was childhood trauma and drama in Alexandria's life leading up to this situation. So, you know, she had been going through a lot of things right from home, okay? Like I told you, there was some type of ritual that was done, but there was definitely some sex magic that took place while raping Alexandria. A spirit is coming through and saying that these are some soulless beings. These are people who are uh, absent of feelings, emotions, a heart, sympathy, empathy, uh, remorse, anything like that. They're soulless beings. Yeah. Alexandria was a targeted individual. She was being gang stalked. She was a target. Once again, we got family secrets that come out here. Okay. These family secrets could be could be pertaining to the fact that, you know, the family was into Freemasonry, was in these secret societies, satanic cults and different things, um, and, and probably some other, you know, underhanded, behind the scenes kind of sinister things or whatever. But there were definitely some family secrets. There were crisis actors all over this case, okay? Everybody who was spoken to, who was interviewed, who Ali knew, they were all crisis actors. They straight up got they acted on and played their role um, pertaining to this situation. Nobody really understood. Alexandria felt like nobody understood, you know, um, why she was transgendered, why she wanted to, why she felt like a girl, why she wanted to be a girl. Nobody understood what she was going through, her feelings pertaining 
to the transformation process, her feelings pertaining to her parents' uh, separation, her feelings to, um, you know, how she was being harassed on a daily basis, what she was going through. Nobody really understood. Spirit is saying that this rabbit hole goes deep, honey. This rabbit hole is way deeper than y'all know, okay? People say that a lot, honey, but it's all kind of sneaky, freaky, creepy things, honey, that goes on in that rabbit hole. If you don't know nothing about it, you better ask somebody about it. I'm trying to tell you. Because it's a lot of goings on in that rabbit hole, and it goes deep, baby. Random acts of violence, okay? So, you know, this this was more than a random act of violence, but but a, th there was violence that took place more than violence, okay? But, um, you know, like I said, Alexandra was just, like, targeted and attacked for multiple different reasons, and it was ridiculous, and there was a hitman that was hired to take her out, okay? They even tried, they was even going to try to set it up as a suicide to, to, to try to suicide her, which means that they was going to kill her, but try to stage it to look like a suicide type of attempt. I believe they probably still staged it like that, even though she was buried. You can't kill yourself and then bury yourself, which is kind of stupid. But I believe a part of the plan is they was going to try to suicide her. and and But I believe she sustained injuries within the assault that would have prevented it from looking like it was a suicide, okay? So there was a change of plans. Remember the setup going wrong card? Okay. Next message we have here is crooked government officials. Okay. So we got, we definitely got a lot of crooked individuals in power and authority um, who partook in situations within this case. I just really hate, like we know that these satanic powers that be exist, but I just really hate that they use the officers the way they do, that many of them are sellouts. There are good officers on the force. But there's a lot of officers uh, who are not good. They are sellouts to these satanic powers that be. They could be in these secret societies and different things. And these people take orders. You understand me? So even something that they may not necessarily really want to do, in order to keep their position, their job, or to keep from being attacked themselves, they have to follow the orders that they are given. And it is like so screwed up to say it like that, but... A lot of times, these officers are either triggered or ordered to do the things that they do. And it's just, it's outrageous, okay? We got gang, 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 bang, um, chain, gang, criminal activity, okay? So, they definitely gang raped her out there in the woods, okay? But Spirit is saying the enemy is big mad. The enemy could be big mad because I'm exposing what really happened in this situation, honey. But the enemy is big mad pertaining to this situation. Why? Because of the police involvement, okay? This is that hidden information that they didn't want to get out pertaining to this case, okay? Um, um, I feel like this is, this is Alexandria coming through saying, who can you trust when everyone has betrayed you? You know, that's a good question. Who can you trust? When you have been betrayed by the people closest to you, you've been betrayed by the people that you work with, that you were cool with, that you was friends with, that you, you thought you knew, and they all betrayed you, even by people that's supposed to protect and serve. Yeah, not sabotage and kill. They're supposed to protect and serve. So we have mentally ill individuals here, okay? So people involved could have been mentally ill or have some type of mental illness, mental disabilities, considering the fact that they're psychopathic, okay? Considering the fact that they're murderous, you know? Obviously, they elevated some go all the way to the top. They got to be mentally ill some type of way. But Spirit could be saying that perhaps um, um, Alexandria has some sort of mental illness as well, okay? We got the CIA, FBI government all over the situation. This is who who made the cover-up uh, really happen, okay? There was definitely betrayal here, okay? There was envy, 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 jealousy, hate, backstabbers, you understand? Betrayal, complete and utter betrayal. Domestic terrorism, okay? Domestic terrorism. Our people, American citizens, are being slaughtered on our own soil due to domestic terrorism, okay? The terrorists are right here, home, uh, homegrown, bred, and fed, right here in the United States of America, committing domestic terrorism every single day, okay? Can't trust nobody. You can't trust anybody, okay? Alexandria couldn't trust anybody. None of us can trust anybody. 
Who can you trust when you can't even trust the people um, in, in, in who that are said to be leaders who are in um, leadership positions, who are in authoritative positions, you know, who abuse their authority, who abuse their power to invade and violate and sabotage and ruin others. You know, when you have been betrayed by your own flesh and blood, who the hell can you trust? Nobody. Why? This is good versus evil. Good versus evil happening every single day, okay? We got fake phony Christians here. I feel like there's individuals that was around Alexandria that she knew that pretend like they're Christians, but they really fake and phony. Why? Because they sell outs. Because they into these, uh, the, 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 these, these satanic cults, these secret societies and things. You know, folks that sacrifice their own flesh and blood, their own kind, okay? We have fire energy here. I believe this is the in this is the energy this is coming through because I told you the 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 original the abductor that offered her the ride was a fire sign. That's the reason why this person is coming through, okay? But there's also a very bossy and manipulative person um here as well. This that could be an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini. Either way, they're all sellouts. They're sellouts to these satanic powers that be. They, they, they're, they're the oath that they take is to protect and to serve the powers that be, not the people. Okay, them the oath that they take, and they dummies with guns, dummies with guns. How do you protect yourself when you got a whole bunch of dummies with guns that are in authority, that are in power? What do you do then? We have air energy here. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, individual involved. So we've got fire. We've got air here. Plots, plans, schemes. I told you this was premeditated. It was set up. It was arranged. It was orchestrated. Okay? How could you betray your own supposed child uh, for your own ill wills and lust for money? Didn't I tell you these people got paid for the setup and the sacrifice against Alexandria Ali Lowitzer? Yeah. How could you betray your own supposed family for your own ill wills and lust for money? For money. Y'all be surprised what people do for money. Next, we got fake phony Christians pretending to be uprighteous when they're sellouts and devils. Fake phony Christians, once again, Alexandria had hidden enemies that she didn't even know. People that was working against her behind the scenes that she didn't even freaking know. That, that was working against her. That was trying to set her up. Look, when people show you who they really are, believe them. Okay? When it was too late. You know, I, I can only imagine in the, in the last moments of Alexandria's life, um, probably her just thinking about all the people that had betrayed her. You know, the, that she was in a glimpse of an eye seeing the true colors of all these individuals. The manager, the officers, the parents, her friends, like everybody. Okay, and then what do we have here? Sacrifice. This was a sacrifice. This young lady was set up and she was sacrificed, period, point blank. Okay, why was she set? Uh, um, okay, so the other messages that we have here, look, why was she sacrificed? For money. Money, honey. That's what everybody wants. That's what everybody about, money. This young lady was raped. Okay, why? For greed. It was for multiple different reasons, but the, a lot of people involved, they were greedy. They wanted money. Betrayal. Betrayal by the people closest to her. Okay? This betrayal here, this talks about gossip, backstabbers, bad juju, two-faced, deceiver, manipulator, liar, disloyal. Okay? You see the knife here. You see the gun here. Betrayal. Your family made attempts to harm you. Yeah. She was just seen as like collateral damage or something like that. You know, the store away or whatever. Crazy. Pure evil. Okay. Pure evil. Demonic energy. Pure evil. This brought Ali a lot of sadness. Ali felt saddened, down, depressed, stressed. Angered. This is sad. They put a hit out on you to have you killed to cover their tracks. They knew that they had done her wrong. 
They put a hit out on her to cover their own assets, to cover their traps. She had people spying on her. She was a target. She was already being stalked and harassed and illegally followed and watched and everything. People spying on her. Who was spying on her? None other than the occult, these satanic sellouts, these secret societies. Yeah. Once again, you can't trust nobody. Can't trust nobody at all, people. Definitely not this kidnapper. Hmm. Huh. Who was a police officer, okay? Negative energy all over this situation. This was a sudden attack, a sudden strike. All of a sudden, this person pulled up, offered her a ride. She hopped in the car, thought she could trust this. The person was an officer. She just lived right down the street or whatever. And, and he suddenly attacked. It was a sudden attack. Stalker. She had been being stalked, watched, harassed, followed. They're dangerous. Spirit is coming through and saying that they're dangerous. These are soulless beings that don't give a damn about humanity. Spirit is coming through and saying cross over spirit. So Ali has crossed over at this time, guys. Midnight, okay? I feel like this, retro, this ritual, <clears throat> the satanic ritual that went on with her body, it was done at midnight on the, on the day that she disappeared. They were stalking, riding past her house before this happened. Like this was this was set up for a while. Your family, fake friends, no good ex-lovers, and um, government came together to destroy you. Okay, I told you there are several people involved in this setup against this young lady. There was a sex ring. I think there was an attempt to try to sex traffic Alexandria by this trickster here. Okay, but this was a psyop. Spirit saying this is a psyop. Okay. There was ops all over this situation. They set this all up. Staged event. It was all set up from the very beginning. Lookalike doppelganger clone. I told you there was a doppelganger that was created. Again, we got doppelganger. There was a doppelganger that was created to make, to look like um, Alexandria. To make it seem like she had ran away on her own. And she was prostituting and now on the streets in some other state. And all kinds of mess. Okay. Somebody close to you is a warlock, male witch, okay? This could be the father. This could be somebody else that she knew that she was close to it, um, um, pertaining to this situation, okay? That, that is a warlock, okay? But there's definitely a dark coven. There was a dark coven that uh, possibly did these, these, these rituals and different things with Alexandria. There's definitely some internal affairs going on here, okay? Because this was an inside job. They spread in lies, okay? So all the things that you see here on the news and the articles or whatever, they're spreading lies. They're lying about the situation. They're, they're retaining, they're hiding the real information, okay? Satanic ritual abuse. This is the reason why there was trauma and drama, childhood trauma, childhood drama. She, she could have been going through satanic ritual abuse her entire life. Okay, satanic sellout church member gang stalkers. Okay, so I'm not sure if, if her family went to church or anything like that, but there, uh, they, this has come up several different times. There are obviously people who proclaim to be Christian, um, church individuals who was who was active participants in watching her and targeting her and stalking her. And, and things like that, okay? We have demonic possession here, okay? Somebody was definitely under demonic possession. It could have been the cop that was triggered to even um, abduct Ali in the first place. Yeah, inside job. Demonic possession, okay? Yeah, this fiery anger. That's that fire sign. Yeah, he was under demonic possession and they triggered him. They triggered him. These MFs going crazy, okay? These folks are crazy, they're crazy. And this mess is going on every single day. And everybody walking around like they living their best darn life. Like they don't have a care in the darn world. And y'all haven't a clue. Y'all haven't any idea, um, you know, what's really happening in this world. Because y'all too busy being entertained. Y'all too busy um, uh, being distracted by other darn things that's literally created and set up on purpose. Um... 
to keep you from paying attention and seeing what is actually really happening in this world, what's really going on, okay? Y'all need to stop thinking it's a game when it's really not, okay? It's a roll of the dice every single day as to who is going to be next. Whose turn is it going to be next? Whose life is going to be snuffed out next, okay? Y'all got to wake up and pay attention, okay? Like, seriously. Because this is beyond ridiculous. This is beyond ridiculous. It really is. Okay, guys, that concludes the um, reading um, all the messages, the spirit reading, and everything. I did pull some um, message dice, okay, for her as well. We have four of the um, black dice here, okay. That lets me know that there is a lot of dark energy around her. Negative individual, demonically possessed individuals, very evil, wicked, negative energy around this young lady, okay. Okay. Here we have um, here we have black magic showing on this room. We have black magic. We have voodoo. Okay. We also have um, demonic possession. Okay. Black magic, voodoo, demonic possession. Y'all probably can't see the message on there clearly. Okay. But there was definitely some magic that was done um, by these sellouts. Okay. This room says sell out here, okay? Next we have, and when I pulled, when I when I, I shuffled and I pulled these out, it came out 999, but if you flip 999, it's 666, okay? Both numbers make references to Lucifer, okay? So we have 666 here on the purple room, or the purple dice, okay? We have red flags here on the purple dice as well, okay? On the pink dice, we have no sex zone. So this lets me know that um, Alexandria was a virgin at the time um, that this occurred, okay? Um, we have boy here on the white rune, okay? I believe this is spirit that was coming through telling me that Alexandria was actually a boy. And then we have the letter Q, okay? One of the persons involved name could begin, first name or last name could begin with Q, okay? On the blue rune, we have here beer. Somebody drinks a lot of beer or like beer that is involved in this situation. Um, next, we have messy. This person, whoever this heavy beer drinker is, is a very messy individual. So this could be um, in reference to their cleanliness, um, you know, or maybe just, they just have a messy appearance or maybe they're messy in <clears throat> things that they say or do or something. But there's something very messy about this person, but they're a heavy beer drinker. Next, we have op here. So this individual is definitely an operative. Okay. And then we have the message spike here. So somebody was very spiteful towards um, Alexandra, okay? On the yellow dice here, we have mother, okay? So the mother is a big factor within this. On the yellow dice, we also have December, okay? On the yellow dice, we also have Thursday, okay? So something could have went on with the mother in December, on a Thursday in December, um, this could have been any year, okay? But we have Mother December Thursday, okay? Then we have the numbers 23, okay? Powers that be number, occult number, satanic powers that be number, and then we have number 8, okay? Um, all of these numerology numbers, they use them in various different ways for various different reasons. So we're going to go back through these messages on the dice one more time before I show you all some other images and go through some other information with you all. Okay, so we have four black, um, very negative, evil, wicked, demonic energy dice here, which lets me know that there were at least four people um a part of this situation around Alexandria Lewitzer, who was very dark and demonic, or this could just represent the very dark, demonic, negative energy that was around her, okay? On the orange dice, we have number 23 and number 8. On the white dice, we have boy 
and we have the letter Q, okay, which could be the first or the last name of any individuals that was involved in this situation, okay? We have on the pink dice, no sex zone, meaning that Alexandria was a virgin at the time that this happened. On the brown dice, we have black magic, voodoo, demonic possession. On the brown dice, we also have sellout, okay? On the purple dice, we have 666-999, okay? On the purple dice, we also... Um, on the purple dice, we also have here red flags, okay? So there was a lot of red flags pertaining to this situation is what spirit is coming through. On the blue dice, somebody is a heavy beer drinker. We have beer, we have messy, we have op, and we have spiked, okay? Somebody who is a heavy beer drinker who is messy, who is an op or an operative, had a lot of spite towards Alexandria that's in this situation or connected to this situation. On the yellow dice, we have mother, December, and Thursday. Day. Okay, guys. So give me just a moment. I'm going to show you all some other images of Alexandria. Okay, guys, here is Alexandria here with her mother. Can y'all see that good? Okay, that's Alexandria. Okay, for any of you doubting that Alexandria is actually transgender, you can clearly see here the Adam's apple. Okay, not that that's even, it's not a major issue, not important like that. Just, you know, be on the disrespectful type of thing. It's not like that with me at all. I just think it is a major factor considering the fact that there's so much lies that goes on, um, you know, with these people. Um, and a lot of these different um, situations of things that goes on um, this um, here is this is the FBI's website here sorry guys this is the FBI's website here of Alexandria Okay. I just want to give you all some other imagery of um of um this young lady. I really I like to do this every time I do the missing mysteries just so um everybody have a good idea as to um who the individual was or what they looked like and different things like that. Okay, guys. So if you notice, like she she pretty much just have this um kind of I mean not really hardcore gothic, but a little bit of a gothic look on a lot of her pictures. Okay. I'm trying to see if there's an image that I haven't showed you all yet. Um Here, uh oh, sorry guys. Here is another image of Alexandria. She like really has this different appearance in a lot of different things that she's in. Okay, guys, so I'm right now, this concludes the reading of everything, but I did want to share with you all some other information. Just a minute. Okay, guys, at this time, I'm going to read you some information. Um, um, this information comes from an article that you can find online, okay? Um this is somebody else's research, okay? So at this point, I want to give credit to, I believe it's um, it's Crime O'Clock somewhere. It's like a blog or something. Um, and they put this article up, okay? So I just want to show you all this really quick, okay? Because 
I um, is not the one to take credit for anybody else's work. This is what this individual in this particular article, there is like so many, y'all. Okay, if you see the name up there, okay. And I just want to, some of the stuff I went through with you all in my own research, my own work, which is what I already discussed with you all, okay. I just want to tell you a few things that this person had in this article, okay. So it's Crime O'Clock Somewhere um, article, okay. This is about the disappearance of Alexandria Ali Lowitzer, okay. Um, this person begins to talk about how I told you all that this case was on an episode of Disappeared, okay, which was episode 9, um, or season 9, excuse me, episode 9, okay, 9966, titled So Close to Home, okay, and I brought this up because it was entitled that for a reason, y'all need to understand that anything that goes through the airways, the satanic powers that be control, anything you see on TV, in movies, on here on the radio, here in the, the satanic powers that be control it, and they have signs and symbolisms everywhere. So the mere fact that they entitled the show um, "So Close to Home," this lets you know that this girl did not leave Spring, Texas. Okay, she her body is there, right in Texas. Okay, that's the reason why they entitled it "So Close to Home" because she is, in fact, close to home. Um, and where this happened and how it took place happened close to home. Um, and like I said, this was season nine, episode nine, 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 flip the nines, you got six, six, okay? Um, okay, so a lot of this I went through with you all um, already. Um, I showed you all these images here with Allie just by herself. And then you have the one at the bottom, which is Allie and the mother, okay? So, um, this person goes on to say in this article that Allie um, was 16 years old when she disappeared after attending another day at Spring High School in Spring, Texas. Um, Allie was described as fun, loving, energetic, and artistic. Allie's goals after high school was um, to attend art school to further her passions, okay? Um this person just goes on to basically discuss some of the things that I told you pertaining to the case. Um, I pretty much went through everything, what happened the morning um, of, you know, before when, when she left for school, all the way to after she left from school, okay, um, and everything. It was just some other information that this person um, obtained the information on. Um, I'm not sure if they got a personal interview with the mother or whomever to get this information, but I'm pretty sure it can be found anywhere, okay? Um, so I'm just going to skip right down to it, okay? So there's a part of this article that says a search of their own. This is the supposed search that the parents um, allegedly did on their own. I kind of briefly skimmed through um, and talked to you all about this okay so um i'm just going to briefly describe what this person have um in their article pertaining to that okay because i didn't go through a big shebang of everything okay but john lewitzer and joanne lewitzer were sh um said to have been shocked by the police statement saying that um, that Ali was probably a runaway and they needed to call back the next day if she hadn't showed up, okay? So at this point is when they decided to do their own investigation. Um, the father, John, is said to have tracked down the school bus company and discovered that they had cameras on the bus, okay? This is when they were able to obtain the camera footage um, of Ali walking out of her school and getting on the bus as well as off the bus, okay? Um, also on the video, there were two other boys um, who lived in their neighborhood who were also seen exiting the bus at the time that Ali got off the bus at home. Um, one of the boys was a neighbor of theirs, okay, and John and Joanne um, is said to have questioned that boy. Um, that young boy said that Allie walked out of the neighborhood once she got off the bus, which was in the direction of her job, which is the Burger Barn, okay? Um, 
the father John is said to have went to speak to the owner of Bur Burger Barn. The owner said that Allie never came in that day, which was clearly a lie. I told you all that in the reading. They lied and said um, she never came to the job when in fact she did and they erased the camera footage. So they lied, okay? Um, and they also stated that she never picked up her check. Again, a lie because that's what she was there for. Um, there was a gas station that was across the street um, and, and John went to this gas station and asked if he could see the surveillance footage, okay? Now, apparently at this time, they claimed that the footage confirmed that Allie never, wa um, never went to work that day. However, like I told you, the surveillance footage from the burger barn as well as that gas station across the street was... Um, edited, alter, erase to show her, okay? And they were told to do this because at this point, a cover-up was going on because Allie did, in fact, walk that way as well as went to her job that day. And there were several witnesses that, that, that seen her and were told not to speak, okay? Um, at this time, the Lewitzers family, Joanne and John, they remembered that they had a family, um, like, a map plan with AT&T, um, and the map was able to show them that Allie's phone last pinged off a tower near their neighborhood, which makes sense. Why? Because um, Allie's job was literally like a couple blocks from where she lived, okay? So that area probably would have had the same towers anyway, so it really didn't prove much, but the fact that she was in that area last and at some point, her phone went off or was cut off or something um, throughout that time, okay? Um, however, there's further information, okay? So, at this point, she becomes an official missing person. About a week after uh, Allie disappeared, John and Joanne went to the Harris County Police. Um, they gave them all of their information, including the surveillance footage from the bus and the gas station. Um, at this time, the police went to the Loritzers to, um, to have another look around inside of Allie's room. The police focused on Allie's, um, Allie's journal that she had, and the police said that Allie had written that she had wanted to run away. That was staged, guys, okay? Um, they claimed that Allie had this uh, notebook or journal or something where she read written that she wanted to run away or whatever, and she left this journal behind or whatever. So that's what the police were using to try to say, oh, she's a teenager, she ran away, she's unhappy, blah, blah, blah. But her mom and dad, the Lewitzers, um, claimed that they did not believe that she actually wanted to run away. She was struggling with her parents' separation, but that was it. Um, Joanne, the mother, also focused on the fact that she didn't take anything with her, like her makeup, her charger for her phone, or money that she had, um, you know, put up or stashed away, which, meaning, which means that she obviously, you know, did not intend to go missing from home and never show back up, okay? Um, however, the police seem to think that Allie just ran away or hurt herself, but they did change Allie's case from a runaway to endangered runaway, okay? Um, the, the Lewitzers um, enlisted the help of Laura Recovery Center. I talked to you all about that. Um, this is a group that helps to find missing people. The Lewitzers um, put out a reward of $25,000 and also put out missing persons flyers, okay? Um, the reward was never, you know, obtained by anybody, of course, because there was a cover up. All of that stuff was staged, okay, guys? Um, the article goes on to say that John said he ran around like a madman, putting up posters on every place he could find, supposedly, okay? About three weeks after that, the homicide unit was finally on the case. This led to investigators looking into John and um, Mason, which was Allie's dad and brother, okay? They were both asked to take a polygraph test, okay? John and uh, John is then said that um, he couldn't believe the questions that they were asking him, and he didn't even want to repeat those questions to Joanne. I found it quite interesting at that part that they questioned 
the dad and the brother, but they did not question Joanne, okay, which is clearly an obvious factor to this case because Allie lived with Joanne, not not John, okay, because like I said, they were separated or divorced or going through a divorce or whatever, so they lived in two separate homes or whatever. Nevertheless, Joanne didn't get questioned the way John and Mason did, okay? Um... So at this time, the article goes on to say that um, there was another possible lead, but it was um, it soon was another dead end. OK, and this is what I also briefly discussed with you all. Um, Allie was supposedly had text with an older boy on the day that she went missing. Some older boy at around 2.50 p.m. on the day that she disappeared. However, they claimed that the boy never saw Allie that day, okay? And it was kind of left at that. Later, a possible connection came up, okay? In Allie's case, um, at this time, her case had went cold, okay? And the Lewitzers had hired a private investigator at this time um, who was helping them continue to search, you know, for answers or whatever, okay? Um, and so this article says that the private investigator came across, um, another case that occurred on May 19th of 2012 in Lafayette, Louisiana, Brandon, um, Lav uh, ooh, killed a 22 year old woman, whatever his name is. Okay. Named Mickey, uh, Shunnick. Okay. Um, Supposedly, this guy killed a 22-year-old woman. Um, Mickey had been riding her bike home when the Brandon guy had sideswiped her. Brandon then offered this woman a ride home, and he killed her, okay? Um, this person, Brandon, had a connection to Spring, Texas, which is the reason why he is being brought up in this situation because they thought maybe he had some connection to what happened to Allie. Um but, you know, this guy was at this time was in prison. So um, he had family. He did have family that lived in Spring, Texas. And after um, he killed Mickey, um, he burned his white pickup truck about 50 miles from where Allie lived. OK, is what they claimed. OK, an eyewitness said that they had seen a girl that looked like Allie talking to someone in a white pickup truck around the time of her disappearance. The police went to speak to Brandon in prison, and he denied killing Allie. He said that he had been in Louisiana at the time, and this was um, confirmed and verified by his employer that he had at the time, okay? So this is the guy that they were trying to, you know, pin Allie's um, disappearance on, and that's the woman that he killed, okay? But he was actually somewhere else at the time. When this happened and he is not you know found not to be involved however he is in prison right now for the murder of this mickey lady okay um so then there was a human trafficking theory that came up at this time okay so in the fall of 2012 the lewitzers hired another private investigator named amber Kamek, okay amber was the first person besides john and joanne who believed Allie was still alive she believed Allie could have been the victim of human sex trafficking um which because houston texas is very large and human sex trafficking happens a lot there okay in october of 2012 joanne received a call from a woman who lived in columbus ohio the woman said she had seen a young girl that looked like Allie at a church event for the homeless. The woman said the girl was quiet but almost appeared like she was being forced to act that way. Um, Amber contacted the police in Columbus and flew out there. Okay, now Amber is this other private investigator okay she is said to have contacted the police in Columbus, Ohio. She flew out there to help them. Amber went undercover, supposedly, this private investigator went undercover and visited several crack and drug houses. Amber also met an undercover officer who was undercover as a pedophile. Um, they both wanted to find all victims of human trafficking, especially the underage ones. Okay, so this private investigator, Amber, who went undercover, also met a woman named Amy. A local sex worker who also helped the police okay she was a snitch she was a rat she was an informant for the police okay but she was a prostitute 
Um, Amber showed the Amy, the prostitute lady, a picture of Allie, and Amy said she knew the girl um, as Allie Cat, okay? Clearly something totally made up, okay? Um, everybody has heard the term Allie Cat before, okay? This girl was paid, first of all, she's an op, she's an informant. She was paid to lie, okay? She was paid to say that. They are like literally throwing off the investigation on purpose. This is what I told y'all in the part of the reading that I did, okay? This girl, look, she's, she would do anything for money, okay? She was already an informant, an op. How hard do you think it would have been for her to come, for them to go to her, pay her a little something and say, hey, if this lady come and talk to you, tell her, yeah, you didn't see, you've seen the girl, and she goes by Alley Cat, okay? Just a complete mockery of the situation, okay? But that's exactly what happened. Amy also described that Allie had a scar on her forehead, which supposedly John and Joanne later confirmed that she did have some scar on her forehead, okay, which was completely made up, okay, she was given that information to say, to make what she was saying to be more believable, okay, and think that they had some type of lead, okay. Amber went with Amy to a drug house. They were provided prescription drugs to, um, they were provided prescription drugs by the police to use in exchange for deals to get into the various homes. Amber said that she saw a young girl that looked exactly like Allie in one of these homes. Amber then left Columbus to give John and Joanne this information. Okay, so <clears throat> basically that led nowhere, okay? So then the part of the uh, article here says, where is Allie? John and Joanne and Amber returned to Columbus a few months later, and in January of 2013, a recovery mission was put into place. Amber went back to the crack house, this time undercover as a madam. Amber was told to lay down on the ground when the police raided the home. The police were able to arrest several people, save eight girls, and seize drugs and weapons. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. They're messing with my throat chakra. They don't want me to say this. Unfortunately, Allie was not amongst the young girls saved that night. Amber believes that Allie, um, that Allie's captors were tipped off, maybe even when they went to the house the first night. Sadly, Allie's case is a, at a standstill. John and Joanne left Allie's room the same as it was the day she disappeared. They are hoping one day they will find answers for Allie. Amber believes she truly saw Allie that one night in Columbus, okay? Y'all, I'm telling you, that is a total setup. That that All of that was totally staged, okay? Allie was um, abducted, she was attacked, she was assaulted, and she was murdered in Spring, Texas, and they know it. And they covered it up. All of that was just a wild goose chase, a waste of their time, a waste of their money, and everything, okay? And I, I, I even believe that the other people that they contacted, um, you know, for help and support was a part of the whole setup. They knew this was, I mean, everybody went in, you know, when you got crisis actors, they play out their role to a T. You understand me? So everybody was clearly aware that this was a sacrifice, that this was a setup. And this is why I told you all, <clears throat> this is the reason why I told you all in the reading that Initially, I didn't think that, I think Joanne was left out of the loop for of a lot of the information pertaining to the setup and stuff because I was thinking like, you know, what type of mother is going to waste time and money knowing that's a part of a setup, <clears throat> excuse me, and this, that, and the other, yet yeah, travel and do all this and that and the other, and if you look at everything, a lot of the stuff early on, you sold, you only see Joanne, the mother, out, you know, doing things, talking to people, doing little seminars, doing interviews, this, that, and the other. I believe for quite a while that um, she was kept in the dark. She was blinded to what actually took place and what actually went on um, with the setup and the sacrifice. I believe to, to this day, um, because it's been 11 years now since this has happened, she knows what occurred. At some point, the parents were paid off. Okay, 
Um, but I told you the father is a Freemason. He's connected to other Freemasons. Plenty other Freemasons was involved in this setup, in this sacrifice of Ali. Okay. And, um, yeah. And, and, and another thing, another, the, the mere fact that I know that people in power are involved in this situation is one thing they, these people are involved in human sex trafficking, but the way they traffic victims, they do so in various different ways. First of all, um, it depends on the class or the, the, the type of the victim that they have trafficked, okay? Many of the traffic victims that the powers that be are behind, they either keep them underground or they would specifically traffic for some for certain persons and that they my point in being they don't really they don't traffic people when the powers that be are involved the people that they traffic they don't go and pimp them out on the street you understand what i'm saying it's done in a different way it's done in a private network of individuals that's into you know this the sex industry it's all done underground okay they don't traffic people just to pimp them out in public on the street, okay? Only a low-level pimp would do that, okay? So then, for, so for that to be possible, that would have meant that she would have had to have been taken by some low-level hustler or pimp or something that, you know, took her out of state and then pimped her out on the street, okay? But you, you got way too many connections to individuals in power. So even if one wanted to say that they had set her up to be human sex trafficked, they would not have her showing her her bare face on the street pimping her out. They would be pimping her out underground. She would be pimped from, like she would literally be taken from one place to the next. Like nobody would see her except for elite individuals that... Um, that she's been made to entertain and, and things like that. Like they don't, they don't do that like that. You understand? So it, it's just a different way that different things go. But um, I wanted to read you all that part of the article just to let you know that there was other information that was said pertaining to this situation. But I'm telling you, it's total hogwash. It's BS. It is a straight up cover up and they know it. Nevertheless, guys... This concludes your reading, um, this missing mystery slash murder mystery for Alexandria Ali um, Lowitzer, okay? For the individuals who did love her, who did care about her, I do offer my condolences. I do apologize um, that this has happened to a loved one of yours. Um, and, you know, and... And for those people who was a part of working against her and setting her up, you know who you are. And, you know, it is, is very pitiful and sad that you all would would be a part of doing such a thing to this person, okay? But for those of you who um, did love and care about her, um, I hope that the information I provided gave you all some type of closure. It's not going to heal your wounds or whatever, but just because of the simple fact you are still without your loved one, which I totally understand. Um, I also want to say that no information that I gave that I said was meant to be of any disrespect or anything like that. I just, you know, give the information that come to me through my spirit, guys. I have absolutely nothing um, against anybody in particular, okay, because I don't know any of these people from Adam, okay, so it doesn't make me feel good to say, oh, people in power, authority figures were involved, or, or this family member, or that family member was involved, or this person that this person knew was involved, it don't make me feel good to say that, okay, um, it's actually very disappointing, I actually, when I do these readings, I get very sad when I get to that point, and I ask my spirit guys that question, because I, it's just like a part of me that is like, you know, come on, it's got to be somebody, you know, it's a lot of sacrifices and different things going on, but, I like to try to see the good in everybody. So, you know, when these things happen, I go over these, th these things be so heartbreaking. You just want to feel like, okay, these people had to have people that loved them and cared about them. That was not a part of this. Okay. And so that's how I go into a situation looking at it because I don't want to believe that such deception um, has happened. 
and it's going on. But, you know, a lot of times, um, often, a lot of the information leads to, you know, other channels, other individuals, and other situations going on, okay? Um, and the way I read and things I do, reason why I give you so many different messages in different formats is just so you can see. I don't pick nothing out on my own. I don't come up with information on my own, make it be what I want it to be. It has absolutely nothing to do with how I want a situation to be. It's what the, the information that I get is what I put down. And so just to clarify, I use the, the dice. I use several different decks of cards. I use tarot. I do the spirit read and everything. So you can get one big picture of everything that's going on, you know, um, or whatever, guys. So I thank you all for listening and for watching. If you will be so nice to, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, for those of you who would like to contact me pertaining a missing or murder mystery or just a general topic that you would like for me to do a reading about, you can reach me at tiffanyziggler60 at gmail.com. If there is anybody who would like to donate to the channel, um, you can do so through Cash App at dollar sign Tiff Diamond three six. The correct spellings um, for that will be in the description box below. Um, as I tell you all all the time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, but most of all, take care of your babies. Okay, um, y'all. This is a wicked world that we live in, and there's evil that is lurking around every corner. Okay, it's a roll of the dice as to who's going to be next. Okay, whose life is going to be snuffed out next. Okay, so y'all just y'all take care of yourself. Okay. Um, protect yourself, watch your surroundings, and watch the company you keep. Keep you some protection on you of some kind. Pepper spray, maze, a pocket knife, a taser, something, okay? Y'all can even get this stuff for your kids, you know, or, you know, at least your teenagers. Um, for them to have some type of protection, a pepper spray or something, you know, just in case somebody try to grab them or do something to them. They know to scream, to yell, to spray the hell out of them, to fight back, to do something, okay? Y'all watch the uh, your the surroundings of your children as well, the company that they keep as well, okay? This is a very dangerous time that we're living in, y'all, okay? So stay awake, stay aware, stay vigilant, and stay prepared because if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready, okay? Until the next time, guys, peace, love, and light. Namaste.